that's, that's very reassuring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are only few states down south and far east which are having problem at present, Allah, and Mizoram and some uh, northeast states. Otherwise, overall, some cases in Maharashtra also. But luckily, uh, these states in central and north India are very good, uh, very well under control. Is it uh, just the vaccine working or is it the isolation uh, or is it a combination of both? It is combination of both. Vaccine percentage wise, you may seem to be. Especially in UP, it's been critical. I suppose the, uh, you know, the, the variant also is uh, uh, it's not spread that. Yeah. Well, we are very fortunate here. I'm having my third dose this Saturday, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So our hospital has got uh, two cases of COVID. Uh, so, two uh, cases. They have not got third dose as yet. Later on. So Dr. H.P. Gupta is there, so, you know. Yeah, I can see her, but she's, uh, yeah, I can hear her now as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice seeing Sambit. He was my candidate. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> this, is, this is candidate, yes, yes. Yes, I'm very happy to see you. Oh, we you. met we met once in some ICJ conference. Yes, probably I was it there. was uh, Ahmedabad. I, yes, it was in Ahmedabad. I was there in Lucknow as well, but it was like a whistle top tour. I came uh, one day and then left. Yeah, so I okay. saw uh, uh, Professor Chandravati from distance. Uh, I don't think she recognized me. Because it was <laughs> said the time. So, yeah, yeah, I was in Lucknow. Yeah, Lucknow has changed so much. It's unbelievable. Well, you should have come to the department, you know. That would have been a shocking yeah. service for you. I, I met Anju. Anju was getting her uh, fellowship uh, of Foxy. Yeah. I saw the department when I came and did that um, TVT workshop. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you did. You did. That was yes. uh, nine, yeah, just I'm after right. the FIGO Congress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but of lately, in recent years, it has further, uh, you know, changed. Oh. Yeah, changed. I probably will go to Indoor Congress. So if I can, in my on my way, uh, I might pop in. Yeah, yeah. Hi, ma'am. Should I start, ma'am? Yes, I think yes, uh, Manju. Start yes, okay. the beginning this thing and people would be joining. Uh, so, good afternoon, all. Uh, myself, Dr. Manju, extend you all a very warm welcome uh, for today's academic feast under the banner of Academic Alumni Exchange Program. And I take proud privilege to call upon a respected Professor P.K. Sharma, sir, uh, who is Secretary of Georgian Alumni Association for showering his blessings and introducing our guest speaker. Over to you, sir. Dr. P.K. Sharma, sir. Are you there, sir? Sir was there till now. He is not. It's all right. Give him a ring. All right. Yeah. So, Dr. This Alumni Association of King George's Medical University, earlier, probably when you were there, it was called as King George's Medical College. So then it mm -hmm. got upgraded to King George's Medical University. So we are a full-fledged university. And now we have a very robust um, uh, alumni association which has got all the graduates and postgraduates who have passed from here. And this alumni association conducts a lot of academic activities and um, a series of webinars, of course, as is evident that uh, webinars have given us an opportunity to connect, connect with all those people very easily. Hence, uh, by we are actually able to get a lot of our old um, pass out students um, so we had um, you know uh, 
lot of uh, are passed out uh, now who are in australia now who are in uk and usa and thereby we are able to connect to them it is good to hear and especially for our residents it's a very nice and interesting opportunity they really enjoy these sessions i'm sure they would be joining uh, as the time passes by so dr pk sharma is secretary of that association and what is nice about it is that you know every time even though he he is from the he is ex uh, uh, hod of the department of anatomy so even though the subject that day being discussed is not from his uh, department but yet he is always very enthusiastic and he loves to join and you know introduce the speaker at least he likes to do that so i would have liked if he is present manju have you been able to contact him manju have you been able to contact him otherwise put up the slides ma'am uh, i think some network issues are there and sir's phone is also not reachable uh, put up tv yes, speed of dr shambit and i'm sure professor hem prabha gupta would you know like to introduce shambit for present <laughs> is there manju, you can i have the slides yes ma'am yes i'm sharing it otherwise remember few things of when he was <laughs> to tell everybody i'm sure the present residents would also like to hear the as i no, mean i vividly remember yeah i vividly remember shambit kundu and chakravarti all three were there do you chakravarti remember chakravarti came chakravarti came after slide us slide is visible ma'am no only shambit is visible i thought it was yet now it's visible no. No, no, no. <laughs> anyway, Uma, I think that Dr. Sharma is there. Yes, I'm there. Yes, Dr. Sharma is there. Uh, so, Dr. Sharma can introduce Dr. Shambhu, yes. and then uh, Hemji can uh, narrate her reminiscences of Shambhu. <laughs> oh, that's great! That's great. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> very good afternoon to all of you particularly good those afternoon, who are sir. interested in particularly those who are interested in hysterectomy and on behalf of jargin alumni association and as secretary of alum this association i welcome every member of this group who, who are listening over here particularly dr uh, dr umar singh dr sambit uh, mukho 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 padhyay uh dr mukhopadhyay i am you are a consultant gynecologist what i have just come to know that you are from the north uh, north folk and norwich university i was just going through your cv <coughs> what i could get was that you are a professionally very highly decorated gynecologist and you are also a faculty member over in the over there and i was just going uh, uh, the reading that your achievements particularly i could find that many books you have written but one of the book which i could find was very interesting that the title of the book is algorithm for the apps and gyne uh i was very astonished to see that in the field of biology you are able to do something with the with the mathematics what is that something astonishing to me is that mathematics is there i, I suppose uh and uh, he is a concerned with gynecology at at norfolk and the norwich uh and uh, he is going to speak on the topic hysterectomy and i hope that we will be much academically advanced once we once we listen the lecture by him uh with these few words i can i congratulate dr uh, mukhopadhyay for coming over here releasing and discussing and enriching <coughs> us by his experience thank you thank you dr upadhyay mukhopadhyay thank you uh, thank you so much uh, sharma sir thank you so much for your kind words uh, now i take uh, opportunity to invite dr sombit for his lecture and his topic is hysterectomy manju, yes, manju just a second mm -hmm. i had mentioned okay. i think 
this is right time to hear okay, from yes, sri gupta ma first and then we'll go to shri <laughs> okay ma so him ji yes it yes, will be very interesting to hear from you it's a really a matter of great pleasure to see a person whom i have guided for the small small things and <laughs> i really remember exactly what the topic of his thesis was uh pregnancy after 35 do you remember indeed i remember right. <laughs> and sambit and kundu both were yes. md candidates and they used to move together they used to move together <laughs> in the labor room in the opd but those were the days when the patients were not that free with the male doctors so we used to help them our their colleagues used to help them and they were really hard working and that's how and that's why he could attend this position so i must congratulate and welcome somebody to you and it's my honor to see you in that position really i am very happy thank you so much for coming uh thank you very much for such kind introduction and at the end of the day as we say in india it is the blessings from the senior which take you to certain position so again thank you very much because i had your blessings and your good wishes from the department and thank you dr pradeep sharma for such a kind introduction and you did indeed mention about uh, the algorithm uh, sometimes in, in when it comes to decision making and uh, it comes to a situation like mathematics uh, and, and and as you would imagine nowadays there is a lot of work on artificial intelligence which is completely based on algorithms uh, whether it is yes or no no or yes and accordingly the next step starts so uh, that book was just a uh, inspiration from one of my mentors professor arul kumaran to say uh, write something to do a book from uh, with uh, with the help of your colleagues from a day to day practice and 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 i think that that's helped me to uh, edit that book and i am grateful to my colleagues uh, so Yeah. so it's a great pleasure to see you all and it's a big honor to be invited uh, in this uh, alumni uh, lecture and uh, and i briefly moved away from india in 1992 worked as a very junior doctor after doing md in the uk to know the system then gradually uh, i passed my mrcog exam and then finished my registrar grade training uh, and then gradually uh, in the you do the right thing you keep everybody happy and you get your competences and then we i became a consultant that was in 2003 uh, and and i was trained in this hospital as a senior registrar and they appointed me as a consultant to lead medical education and also uh, my interest was uh, prolapse surgery uh, and benign gynecological surgery so over the year things have changed in the uk when i joined i was a gynecologist we had only six uh, seven consultant in our department i did both obstetrics and gynecology but uh, it got specialized specialized i now do only gynecology and that too within the gynecology i do prolapse surgery and urogynecology uh, and the oncology is done by separate uh, doctors uh, so as the advanced minimal access surgery so things have changed in the uk as well and i also pursue other interests um, you know my other interest is medical education i was appointed to lead undergraduate education with the new medical school which is the norwich medical school which i did till 2010 then i became the clinical director of, of the hospital uh, of the department which uh, i did for 5 years and then i had some external roles i am the chair of the professional development committee at the rcog and then also i got some roles in the europe um which is um, uh, i am a treasurer for the european board of uh, obstetrics and gynecology so that's me and i don't know how to share the screen because i never used google we always use microsoft teams or zoom so let me just try and learn something uh can you see my screen it's not no. visible sir right so i lost everything now uh if i send you the uh, uh, sir here is the fourth icon which is showing this arrow which is showing present now you have to go on this icon okay so i got it now okay yeah. present present now you have to go there and then uh, there you will see a uh, icon in the center of it you have to select so i 
Uh, where is the no. icon? Now your two is... pictures are coming. Two pictures oh. are coming, Dr. Samit. No. I have to log out from this. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, where is the icon? Uh, uh, present now. This is fourth one. Uh, chat with everyone. Then meeting. After this, yeah. Present now. <laughs> I don't have present now in this, in my thing. You have to. Uh, so, uh, I don't have up meeting details 24 uh, chat with everyone and activities. So you have to stop sharing the screen, maybe. No, uh, screens are not being shared from anyone from this place, sir. So present now. So I can see the present now. Uh, so can you send me can you send me a PPT on mail so that I can present it from this side? Uh, it says present now. Do I say as a tab, as a window, as a uh, entire screen? Yes, you have to say your entire screen, sir. Okay, or, entire yeah. screen. Okay. And, and then, then when you are going to this your entire screen, you have to click in the center. When you will click in the center, this share will become highlighted. <laughs> Is it happening, sir? Uh, I am clicking in the center. Uh, it says share. Yeah, yeah. Share is becoming highlighted. It says can't share screen. Google Chrome might not have screen recording permission on your computer. Go to system preferences for more help. Sir, is it, is it your Mac? Apple, sir? If, um, it's Apple. Apple. Yeah. Yeah, it's Apple. Apple. Not permitting, sir. Apple. Okay, Apple. That's the problem, sir. Um, okay, give me a second. I also got a, um, uh, I also got a um, Microsoft. Um, well, what is the other computer? Windows. Yeah, yeah. I, I will do that Windows. in a minute. Windows will work, sir. Yeah. So you have to give me a second if that is all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. We are waiting. Yeah, okay. Uh, so if you can send me the email. Uh, connecting yeah, I am. I am doing WhatsApp also, sir, to your yeah, number. No, just.
जी आइए खोल दीजिए खोल दीजिए गाड़ी स्टॉप स्टॉप लगा दीजिए गर्मी हो गई जी हाँ लगभग ठीक है लेकिन पूरे में ठीक है Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. How are you looking? Yeah, I got my work computer, so that will be working fine. Let's see. If I, I would like to get the presentation emailed here, so I will do it in, in a minute. Just give me a second. Okay, sir. We are waiting. Can you? Do you have to open the presentation and then share the screen, or? Yeah, sir. You have to open your presentation. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. We are able to see it. Uh, just will request you to do it in uh, slide share mode. Can you? Can yeah, you see perfectly, it? perfectly yes, visible, right. sir. Right. Perfectly okay. visible. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. So, uh, well. I will make a start now, and the hysterectomy is a common operation. I think gynecologists do hysterectomy, which is the bread and butter, but yet it has uh, generated a lot of controversies over the years. So it's nice to be uh, talking to you, and also towards then I want to find out your perspective and what is the current practice in, in, in India and also in the <coughs> North. So I can share your experience as well. Uh, so this is my hospital, which is an university okay. hospital. And I like to acknowledge uh, help of and grateful to my colleagues with whom I work, uh, Ms. Sule, Ms. Gruba, um, uh, and Charlotte, who was my research fellow. And I will be presenting some data later on in this meeting. Uh, in this presentation, and which Charlotte put together, and we helped us to publish a paper. And most, and last but not the least, is Dr. Henri Clau from Nice, and, and south of France, uh, where I've been there for a few days to learn his technique of doing vaginal hysterectomy. And these are my interests: uh, RB UK and Kibomed. Uh, they are they gave me uh, some travel bursary to travel uh, to uh, France. Okay. So this place is the um, our what we call the day procedure unit. So basically, we the patients usually come around 7:30 in the morning, and by five o'clock they're all gone home, and by seven or eight o'clock the unit is closed. And this is a unit where is a rapid turnover, supposed to be very efficient, and least expensive for the healthcare providers. So before we start saying anything about hysterectomy, I think we should acknowledge and pay tribute to, um, to the Greek philosophers and, and the origin of the word hysterectomy. The his, the, both the Greeks uh, and the Latin, they also debate whether it was a Latin or Greek in origin. But uh, recently I had been to the um, European Congress, and so I had to have some conflict of interest and perhaps we need to support to say the word hysterectomy came from hysterectomia, which is hysterectomy came from Greek uh, in origin. And this is here is on your left is Hippocrates uh, who believed that the uterus wanders inside the uh, body and that is the reason you get uh, hysteria. And this was his teaching. Uh, and, and then Plato questions, uh, so okay, it is wandering, but where does it go? Uh, and then Hippocrates says, you are very annoying. You are the same guy like Socrates who asks too many questions. But if you read in between the lines, if you can say that his, uh, where does it go means it has to come out somewhere. And that is where the philosophy or the conception of hysterectomy or removal of the uterus. 
Now, if you think historically, what when was the first hysterectomy done? It is in the Greek literature. In it was 150 years BC when the first hysterectomy was done. And that was actually a journal hysterectomy. There was not much uh, in the literature after that, but in 1813, uh, Leonard Langenbach, um, I think from States, performed the first uh, abdominal hysterectomy. It was there in 1863. Charles Clay from Manchester did a hysterectomy, but sadly the patients died. Uh, it was this uh, guy from um, Massachusetts who had the first hysterectomy survived. But then till 1920, there was not a much uh, in hysterectomy. It used to be done by up and down incision, had a horrible post-operative period. And in 1920, it was Johannes Fannenstiel who, des uh, who described the Fannenstiel incision with which we are doing uh, all the hysterectomy. And in 1930, Richardson did the first total abdominal hysterectomy. And you see from 1930 to 1989, for 60 years, there hadn't been any much improvement and Harry Rick from Pennsylvania did the first uh, LAVH or laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy. And following that in 1993, the same person Harry Rick did in 1993 did the total laparoscopic hysterectomy. Shabit, so, your slides are not moving. No, I'm talking. Your slides the same are not moving. No, sir is talking, I think, only on first slide only. Okay, okay. Uh, you can see the figures. Yeah. Uh, in 1930, it was uh, Richard yeah, yeah. did the. And Harry Rick in 1989 did a laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy. And then in 1993, it was um, uh, Harry Rick again did the laparoscopic, total laparoscopic hysterectomy. So, this is in a nutshell about the evolution of the history of, uh, of hysterectomy. Uh, and, and so, essentially, there are three routes, as you all know. Uh, either you do an abdominal hysterectomy, you can do total or subtotal, you can do vaginal, uh, and you can do laparoscopy. Um, so you can either do total laparoscopic or laparoscopic assisted vaginal, laparoscopic supracervical, robotic hysterectomy. And more recently, uh, which has taken and is a new player on the block, is the natural or if it's transluminal hysterectomy or not. I don't know whether you have seen any. It can be either vaginally assisted or it can be a, a robotically uh, assisted. Uh, so, and. So the knots is probably going to take over uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy in the future, but I will come to that in a minute. Okay, so these are the essential three routes for hysterectomy. Now, with my European hat on, I get to see some European statistics, and these are the figures for uh, high volume operation, uh, which are published by 24 uh, EU member states. And as you can see, the tonsillectomy, um, a bypass and osteosis, appendicectomy, and hysterectomy. So from 2013 to 2018, and what, you have see, what we have seen in the Europe is there had been a dramatic fall in the total number of hysterectomies, uh, you know, compared to some other high volume procedures. And in some cases, like in Denmark, the fall has been from 20% in 2013 to only just 6.2%. And this is probably due to introduction of uh, myelina interferon system for treating menorrhagia or endometrial ablation or a laser ablation of the endometrium, uh, TCRE. All these procedures led to a dramatic uh, reduction in the rate of hysterectomy as a whole. And this is a study from Denmark as you can see, uh, uh, there is a decline in overall uh, rates of all hysterectomy, but you can also see, interestingly, the laparoscopic hysterectomy rate is going up, the abdominal has gone down, the vaginal has gone down, overall there is a reduction, uh, but gradually the laparoscopic hysterectomy is also going up. And this is a good epidemiological study from 2021 uh, from Denmark, uh, and I don't know what is the situation in India as I hear some of my friends, the number of TLHs or laparoscopic hysterectomy is also going up. So moving on to recent statistics from Europe, again, you can see uh, they've looked at very some high volume procedure like laparoscopic hysterectomy, inguinal hernia repair, total knee replacement, transluminal angioplasty and laparoscopic appendicectomy. In some country, the number of laparoscopic hysterectomy has gone significantly in Sweden, in Finland, you can see the uh, rates have almost doubled. Uh, so the in, in overall, uh, uh, in this Western Hemisphere, as you can see, 
the number of cases of laparoscopic hysterectomy is going up. Uh, now, if you look at uh, the clinical scenario, you are not going to doubt that this is the ideal case for abdominal hysterectomy. Uh, it is not possible to do it laparoscopically unless you are a super, super hero surgeon and want to take several risks. And so abdominal hysterectomy definitely has a uh, place and this is beyond any any um, doubt. On the other hand, if you see this one, this is a severe endometriosis, as you can see. Um, again, you can argue it can be safe abdominally in your hands or those who are, have got advanced laparoscopic skills, they may want to do it laparoscopically. Um, so in bigger centers in Europe, in, indeed in my hospital, uh, these cases are all done laparoscopically and of course nobody would excuse me sir that. sir yeah. uh, sorry sir. Uh, sir yes sir sir now it was better when i uh, you know your voice is not very much uh, audible sir is it's it audible not? but uh, yeah it's audible okay, but it's not I'll... very clear yeah can you hear me now yeah uh, can you hear I think me slight now? yeah it's slightly better sir can you hear me volume now? is a bit low yes yeah yeah can volume is low yeah uh, yeah, can you hear me now? No, yes, it is sir. still very soft. It's still soft. It should be a bit louder more. Okay, then I will. I will shout then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't so shout. yes, uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, uh, this uh, the two pictures. One side on the, your right is the big fibroid uterus, and there is no doubt that. Uh, 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 abdominal hysterectomy is the right procedure. Just give me a second. I got a separate microphone. Let me see if I can put an in increase the voice. Is, is that all right? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Very nicely audible. Right. Sir. It's very nicely audible. Right. Yeah. yeah, I got this uh, additional microphone, which I got plugged in my ears. Yeah, that's, that's better, I think. We are forcing to take your out all the gadgets, sir. Yeah, no, I've got <laughs> many other gadgets. I got a bit of... Uh, <laughs> I got a bit of philia for gadgets. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, sir. Right. Sorry. So I think uh, I got this. Uh, it will be useful. So yeah, there is a little controversy about how you will approach in these two cases. Uh, uh, this is a lady. This is a patient with severe endometriosis. And um, if you have advanced laparoscopic skills, I think laparoscopy is probably the best for the patient. But indeed, if you are not very confident, then uh, the TAH uh, or abdominal hysterectomy would be the safer option but what about this type of patients which are the majority i would think there's a non-prolapsed uterus but the uterus is enlarged and there is no significant pelvic pathology and it is this group of patients where there is some controversy uh, and and whether you should approach laparoscopically or whether you should do vaginally. We are not talking about patients with prolapse. This is talking about benign hysterectomy, say for a small little fibroid or heavy periods. Uh, uh, a, group, a large proportion of these cases in, in the UK at present, or even in Europe, is undergoing a laparoscopic hysterectomy. But there is, it is an opportunity to rethink whether this should be done laparoscopically or vaginally. So the advantage of laparoscopic surgery or minimal access surgery is you get few small cuts versus large incision. This is very appealing to patients. It is less trauma to the muscles. You don't retract your rectus muscle when you go in or you don't put big retractors. So you don't get damage to nerves or tissues. There's a less chance of bleeding, less scarring internally, less trauma to organs. If you are a very skillful laparoscopic surgeon, then you have less pain and reduced use of narcotics, um, less hospital time. This is very important in the Western hemisphere. The less time we keep in the hospital, hospital gets more money and more incentive um, and less effect on the immune system and better outcomes and higher accuracy. So these are the advantages of minimal access surgery. And often um, you get uh, new procedures introduced. Uh, and, and one of the key things of the new procedures uh, is they have to have 
done in a minimal traumatic way or, or laparoscopically. So, and if you look at a day case, if we do in the UK, this is the cost in the UK. If you do a patient as a day case, the hospital gets paid around 742. Uh, it costs the hospital around 742 um, pounds. If it is an elective inpatient, say you have taken a patient and done a hysterectomy as a day case, it will cost the hospital around 742. If you do the same case, without keeping extra days. Normally our hysterectomy stays one night uh, to two nights, basically, sorry, two nights. Then basically you pay uh, the hospital, sorry, uh, the hospital will be uh, uh, incurring a cost of 3,894. And if it is, an, uh, if it is uh, an, again, any extra bed days, it will cost 346 an outpatient attendance. So basically, the minimum time you keep in the patient in the hospital, you uh, incur less costs. And this is very important in the Western world in the UK. And therefore, um, you know, there is a big incentive to push a surgery, which will cost you less. Patients recover and the outcomes are good. But what is the evidence? Now, whatever, uh, wherever you want to go, if you look at the Cochrane review, if you look at the ACOC committee opinion, it is uh, that uh, you know the jury's uh, is very clear uh, that uh, vaginal hysterectomy is the approach of choice where feasible because it has better outcomes. A laparoscopic hysterectomy is prefer preferable to abdominal hysterectomy where vaginal hysterectomy is not indicated or feasible. And then basically to the clinician, it has to be an individualized plan to decide the mode of hysterectomy. And again, if you look at uh, the ACOG opinion very recently, uh, which, uh, it also confirms vaginal hysterectomy is superior to laparoscopic hysterectomy and abdominal hysterectomy with first return to normal activities, fewer febrile episodes, and no advantage of laparoscopic hysterectomy over vaginal hysterectomy. So the bottom line is if you are able to do the operation vaginally, don't think of laparoscopically. And vaginal hysterectomy still is the gold standard when feasible. Now, why vaginal hysterectomy is not that popular? We are not talking about prolapse. We are talking about uh, non uh, decent uterus. Um, so because the often uh, the logic is there is a lack of descent, the uterus is big, uh, there is a lack of operating space or previously caesarean section, there is a risk of bladder injury, patient is nulliparous, and, and of course there are availabilities of uh, high-tech gadgets which can also make you feel a more uh, sort of uh, technologically advanced without realizing that the additional cost and also in this day and age the effect on the environment and as you can see uh, the, this is a data from 2013 um, from the American Journal so the number of uh, vaginal hysterectomy is also declining and it is uh, sort of uh, postulated because there's a less effect of training uh, and so the surgeons are not properly trained to do vaginal hysterectomy, and therefore they are uh, doing less and less vaginal hysterectomy, whereas getting more exposure to laparoscopic hysterectomy, uh, and therefore they're getting more confident. And this is the picture, not just in the UK, it's in the Europe and also in States, the same picture. Now, laparoscopic surgery is not per se uh, in, is the whole thing about early recovery and less traumatic. There are other issues which influences uh, post-operative recovery, and this includes uh, the public. This includes uh, what we call enhanced recovery program, uh, which influences the outcome of MAS. And this was the paper published by the college uh, in February 2013. But the bottom line uh, is the patients are healthy as possible before receiving a treatment. So in other words, you optimize the patient in, of their medical condition. They should receive the best possible care during operation. So the best operation you can perform on the patient based on the evidence. And also they should receive best possible care while recovering from uh, this uh, uh, operation you have done. Now, if you take the e enhanced recovery in gynecology, can you take these principles of enhanced recovery program, pain relief and vessel selling devices, which are essential for any operation and apply them to vaginal hysterectomy? 
So three things uh, is we optimize the patient so they are medically fit and well, no underlying severe morbidity, which would require uh, admission uh, and modify their uh, post-operative uh, period. We also concentrate on pain relief uh, and also uh, concentrate on the technique which we use for vessel sealing or, or hemostasis. So what about the pain relief? Now, most of the time our pain relief is reactive. When the patient gets pain, we give pain relief. So is there any position of giving the pain relief uh, and preempt the patient will give, get pain and give them uh, adequate pain relief? preoperatively. So there are studies, uh, this is a randomized studies which was published in the International Urogyny Journal in 20, 2009, which we normally use anyway, uh, is uh, for vaginal hysterectomy. If you give preemptive uh, local anesthesia, we usually give bupivacaine or levobupivacaine, roughly 40 mils of quarter percent. Uh, and it postoperatively, it is associated with significantly lower pain scores and reduction of narcotic use post operatively Now, one important thing is to avoid narcotic use because narcotic makes patient drowsy, it makes some patients sick, and clearly, if you can get away without using narcotic by giving some local anesthetic, I think it would be ideal. Uh, you want the patient to recover quickly. They want You want the patient to drink uh, and get back to eating properly. Uh, so that is your aim for post-operative uh, recovery. And then there is also evidence that if you use um, uh, analgesics, which is uh, along with uh, uh, local anesthetic uh, preemptively and then and that technique is called multimodal techniques and that helps in post-operative uh, pain relief. What about uh, vessel sealing devices? Now when you tie a pedicle um, with uh, vicryl uh, sutures or monocryl sutures, uh, the pedicle is still, some of the nerve fibers may still be alive and, and it can also cause pain. So that is the logic behind using uh, bipolar coagulation. And there are studies uh, which were published uh, uh, you know, in the last uh, 10, 12 years, which indeed shows that if you use bipolar coagulation with biclamp forceps uh, versus conventional suture ligation, uh, there is less pain, uh, less post-operative pain, and, and, and there is also less bleeding. And in some cases, there was also less um, operative time. Now, the vicryl suture here is the conventional we used to use. These are used for laparoscopic technique, as you probably seen. These are called Ligasure. Uh, this is the same manufacturer. You can cut and coagulate. Uh, and this is just a bipolar electrocoagulation uh, for um, clamp, just like a main goods clamp or a, a Zeppelin clamp which you can use uh, for bipolar coagulation uh, to seal the vessels. And can we discharge them on the same day? So if we do a vaginal hysterectomy, can we discharge them on the same day? So they did a prospective observational study. And this is Richard Penketh from, uh, I think from Lee, uh, from Cardiff. Uh, in the UK. He was my senior register when I first came to this country. Uh, so vaginal hysterectomy he performed as a 24-hour day case procedure and appears to be safe and traditional in patient management with a high rate of early discharge and a low rate of readmission. So there are, are reports and there are studies and, and it is advantageous to the patient as well. They go, can go and recover at home. And as the whole key thing depends is how you prepare the patient, how you do the operation, and how pain relief you offer to this patient. So to see whether you can do this uh, and discharge the patient on the same day, so what we did is we went to Nice, this lovely place in south of France, and we went to Dr. Henry Club's unit in St. George's to see how he does hysterectomy. So he started his day at 8.30. By 12.30, he did four vaginal hysterectomy, not for prolapse. These were for patients with menorrhagia, with fibroids. And then he took us for a meal, and they said, let's go and see this patient post-operatively. And, and three or two or three of them were sitting there, 
uh, ready to go home. One had social problem, uh, so she stayed. The fourth one was the last patient, so she was supposed to go home at seven. So we are quite impressed, and the patients were relatively pain-free. So what we did is we did we tried to replicate uh, his technique. We tried to replicate. Uh, we introduce a new pathway in our hospital, and to see if we can follow that and improve our uh, patient's care. And then the data we collected, we also published this in uh, the International Figo Journal. So what we did is the pain control. This is age-old technique. You do it for obstetrics, so it's no different. We used Purender block, uh, 20 mils of quarter percent levobupivacaine. Uh, it is available all over the world. And we also used paracervical block. Again, it is available all over the world. Uh, and, and then post-operative analgesia, we told the anesthetist specifically that we are not going to use uh, any narcotic so the patients can go home. So what we relied was on paracetamol and ibuprofen, and some patients had um, some falterol or diclofenac uh, suppositories. And this is the technique you use, uh, like you do pudendal block, but we don't put the needle from inside the vagina. Uh, it is from the perineum muscle. We go there. We Follow, go towards the ischial tuberosity. As you can see, this is where the nerves start branching. And then here is the ischial spine. So infiltrate bilaterally, 10 mils each on each side. So that is uh, the pudendal block we use. And then the procedure is with minimum instrument. This is the picture from Dr. Clough. These were the instruments. We also introduced the same thing. The key thing is to use to have this overts uh, long speculum. Uh, these are the nevratil breast case. It, most units, uh, everybody has these. I think they, you know, if you do word times, you will have that. And these are some tenaculum and long artery forceps. And this is the key. This is the bike clamp uh, which we use. And as you see, we don't catheterize the patient. And after the operation, we also don't use any vaginal pack. Uh, and this is uh, the technique we normally use. I will go a little bit more about the technique. Now, the uterus is uh, pear-shaped, and because you are not doing a prolapse hysterectomy, your cervix is high up, and you have to work in this small place. So the first step is the same, uh, and what we do is uh, you, you, do, you take the uterosacrals, and then remove the cervix. So you do a cervical amputation. By doing that, you con convert the pear-shaped uterus to an apple shape. Okay. Now the reason you can ask me what why do that? You can go up like this. So basically, when you are using bipolar electrocoagulation, you are moving the we are not pulling. There is no pull as, uh, allowed. You are pushing the uterus to one side to bring your pedicle and the blood vessels, say the uterine, to the midline. And then you sort of coagulate with your bipolar and midline and the perpendicular. Now, if you try to do that by pulling, what you will do is, if you try to pull and clamp and use the bipolar forceps, then what will happen is it will cut before you coagulate and therefore you can bleed. So the whole technique is, bring your blood vessels in the midline so then bring your blood vessels in the midline and then coagulate and that is the reason you make it to uh, apple shaped so that is where you were seeing so all there are only two instruments one is the tenaculum we push it sidewise and then you use the bipolar so no traction or pulling if you pu pull and you try to coagulate you will cut the vessels or the ligaments before you actually coagulate. So this is the main, this is the key step. And normally what I do is we go side by side, go up, finish one side, and then go up this way, and then the uterus is out. So as you can see, if you have a big uterus with fibroids, sometimes you can hemisect it. And then there is only one suture. I use monocryl to, uh, to uh, close the vaginal vault. So this is... Uh, uh, the technique we use and using bipolar technique. And if, if size doesn't matter always, as you know, 
Uh, if this was in Henry's unit, uh, he did the hysterectomy in front of us. You can see there are so many fibroids, big uterus. Normally, you would have done it uh, vaginally. We we also done big one, and the biggest one, we haven't been to the 1 kg club yet. The biggest one we have done is 833 grams. So what we did is uh, we followed up this patient. Uh, they had open access to the gynecology world. And then for post-operative follow-up, um, the nurse uh, saw them in the clinic and we collected the feedback from, from them as well. So this is our result. Again, this has not been updated. One of my uh, uh, registers is working on it. This is from 2015 to 2018. Um, so in that three years, we did 100 total laparoscopic hysterectomy then combined LAVH and VH was 100. The patients who had LAVH, they want that their ovaries out. That's the reason we did the LAVH. Uh, and then they all, and there were 136 TAH for benign, and these are all for non-prolapse. Uh, so we looked at 100 consecutive LAVH, VH cases, 60 had laparoscopic self fingophotomy as well, and 40 had VH. These are the demographics. Uh, so, Previous section, there were four patients who had previous section. One was a nulliparous, uh, so a variety of patients. Most of them had heavy periods, then had recurrent postmenopausal bleeding where we couldn't find any cause. And the normal size uh, to 18 centimeter long, and the weight gained from normal to 830. The mean weight was 247 grams. So time of discharge, as you, as you can see, 91 patients were discharged uh, in less than 24 hours, and nine required additional stay. And if you compare it with the other procedures, uh, length of stay, so as expected, the total abdominal hysterectomy required a uh, longer stay, more than 65 hours. And you can see the least one was the vaginal hysterectomy for non-prolapse and the LAVS. They all went at the same time. Even the TLH, the total laparoscopic hysterectomy, required longer duration. And obviously, for prolapse, they have back and catheters. They take slightly longer. It's a different pathology. So we compared our data with uh, other studies. And as you can see, um, most of them are consistent with our data. Um, so vaginal has got the quickest recovery, and the same day discharge rate was higher. Uh, even the robotic didn't compare with the vaginal. And, and the admission rate uh, was, our admission rate was same as almost 0.5 to 1%. Um, so it was. Uh, almost same as it is quoted in the literature. And what about the cost? If you look at the cost for a, in the Western world, so the vaginal cost is the cheapest and more. the more technology you go for, you pay the price. It's a robotic technology, you get higher cost. But uh, where if you're doing vaginal, uh, it is the cheapest as a, again, you can see. We had complications. We had three vault hematomas, uh, one bladder injury, and one patient returned to theater. This was very unfortunate. This patient, at the same time, had a small posterior prolapse. We repaired it. Nothing to do with the hysterectomy. Sadly, she went back to theater to evacuate a hematoma from the posterior perineurophy. So nothing to do with the hysterectomy, but we counted them. One patient had a previous cesarean section. We opened the bladder, but then we repaired it. We put ureteric stents, and then 10 days later, we did a cystogram, and the cystogram was uh, intact, no leakage. And, and six weeks down the line, we removed the ureteric stent. Three had vault hematoma, which were treated conservatively, and the hematoma drained. We gave them antibiotics, and then they recovered. So as you can see, if you take the principles of uh, minimal access surgery and apply it um, to vaginal surgery, perhaps it is better. You, you don't get any cuts. Um, it is we don't uh, retract any muscles. There is less bleeding. Bleeding if you use the bipolar device. There is less scarring uh, as well uh, because you are not opening the abdomen. There is less trauma to organs. Uh, if you are skilled, you don't injure the bowel, and there's less pain and reduced use of narcotics by following um, the e enhanced recovery program and giving preemptive local analgesia. They are discharged on the same time. 
there's a less effect on the immune system and of course there's a better outcome and they are back to work in three four weeks so you can take all the principles and judiciously use it and selectively select uh, patients um, and develop and uh, improve the skills for vaginal surgery so now in conclusion i just like to say that uh, you know the surgeons can come and do your laparoscopic surgery you are a gynecologist because uh, it is the hallmark uh, you can do vaginal surgery you 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 can do prolapse surgery you can do vaginal surgery it's a hallmark of a gynecological surgery and this art should not be lost and vaginal hysterectomy should be approach of choice where it is feasible it is cost effective and clearly it provides you with better surgeon and I would encourage the next generation of um, surgeons or gynecologists should master this skill otherwise it is soon going to be a lost start of a gynecologist and thank you I'm very happy to take any questions Ma'am, you are not uh, unmuted, ma'am. HP Gupta, ma'am. Ma'am is saying something, but she is not audible. HP Gupta, ma'am, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, for your clear and crisp talk and definitely it was uh, including many clinical tips practical tips also uh, miss dr gupta cannot yeah i think she's ma muted yeah, ma'am is, yeah, ma is trying to speak something but Dr. Uma Singh is also muted. <laughs> okay. So, uh, hello. Yeah, it was wonderful. And I'm sure especially the residents must have greatly benefited. And uh, to the resident, it's very inspiring that when they see, you know, somebody passed out from here, is established somewhere, is doing very well, um, uh, not just the name of KGMU, but seeing this alumni outcome inspires them, gives them confidence that they made the right choice when, you know, they selected this institute as the place yeah. of training. This gives them confidence that, yes, uh, they will do well uh, later also. And thank you so much for joining in this program because that is the reason why we are doing these webinars. Sure, yeah. we, we absolutely get, uh, the residents particularly get inspirations from people who have done from here. And of course, as Hindi had mentioned, we are always, always um, proud of our alumni and we feel happy when you all are doing better. So it's matter, you know, whenever any student does well, it gives it gives a reflected shine and, uh, you know, credit to the teachers. All the Absolutely. Way. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I had trainees who came here from Australia and they spent three, four years with me and then they have now yeah. gone back to Australia and they keep in touch. So it is it is yeah. uh, quite a humble experience. Uh, yes. So. yes. Yeah. So it is great. Yeah. So is Anju there? Would she like to speak a little bit? Uh, Anju there? Because Anju probably was junior to you. Uh, no, no, you're in the same batch. Actually, you are same batch. Yes, yes. Yeah. So because otherwise most of the faculty which is now there wasn't, uh, was all, were all, you know, uh, were not there in the scene. So it is probably just Anju who is there now. So, so yeah, you were same batch. I remember. Yeah, Anju and we were Anju Dashana and um, what's oh, her yes. name? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, Sunita, I met Sunita in Lucknow uh, in the yes, Congress. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So and they were. She's doing, yeah, and she's doing well. She is running a nice infertility IVF center. So oh. she's doing, she's practicing and has a nice infertility center. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you would be today probably uh, people have not joined. I mean, 
usually dr das does not join dr kalyani das does not join uh, mm -hmm. these activities webinar because she probably uh, is not very comfortable with the, the tech and technology uh, yeah and all those yeah yeah she is not very comfortable but if you meet her she she's fairly active of course covid this aberrant year has made everybody yes, yeah. otherwise yeah otherwise till then she was operating she was actively seeing patients wow, and all right. active of course dr chadravati is actively working still still mm, uh, mm. she's actively working so she is an inspiration for all of us and um, so it's great good to have you had it there oh thank you i, I, I probably would be uh, going to uh, the indoor congress uh, the foxy congress aicog yeah. oh, yeah, so uh, yeah so if you are there of course we'll meet up yes. there anyway yeah, some sure. of us would definitely be there so we yeah. will kind of do do a simultaneous parallel some kgmu meet there then maybe, yep, maybe yeah. let's see if we can organize let's that let's see if we can do that yeah we'll be happy to do that yeah let's see okay. if there we can do something okay. like that so All at right. last thank you so much dr sambit for uh, taking welcome. Uh, your precious time and giving this precious uh, nice lecture to us and i at last i thank you all uh, seniors and friends who has joined the meeting thank you so much thank you have a nice day right thank you sir thank you. bye thank you bye